In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to sculpt realistic looking ears using Blender 2.8 and its sculpting tools. But um, as, as a beginner, you might be finding this uh, sculpting the ears to be quite intimidating and maybe even quite boring. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to sculpt realistic looking ears, not only so that it's easier as a beginner, but it's also a lot more quicker. So I'm just going to open the previous video before we create the ear. So, oops, it's uh, this one. So we started with nothing. So all we need to do is go into, let's say, the layout workspace or the modeling workspace, either one of them, and we just create a new mesh. So let's go Shift A and we create, let's say, uh, a cube. Okay, and I'm just going to move this to the side and just straight away I'm just going to start to model in a basic shape for the ears. So add in a loop cut. Um, Let's make the entire box thinner, so S, Y, 0. This is going to be the thickness of the ear. Uh, grab these two vertices at the top, move it up, and try and get that sort of D shape. And move this one closer to here. Move these two uh, verts closer to this ear. So you can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm literally... Um, tracing the shape of the ear and if you have a reference image this, this is where it will come super handy just literally try to uh, sculpt out the major silhouette of the ears now i'm sort of doing it sort of freehand which i shouldn't be i would recommend that you uh, import an image reference by going shift a image uh, background or reference and then just do it in the background just for the brevity of this tutorial i'm just going to skip doing this i'm just gonna, trying to get just the major shapes of the ears as a basic shape, this is good enough. So all I need to do is select the character, go Shift S cursor to select it, then select this object, then go Shift S selection to cursor. Okay, then once I've done that, go to the modifiers panel, hit add modifier and select mirror modifier. Then tap into edit mode, select all vertices by hitting A or go select all and then move it to the side like so and then scale it down and pretty much just fit it according to the realistic reference. The realistic size of an ear is from the um, eyelid to the lips. So again, it varies by humans. For females, you might go with a bit more smaller petite ears around the eye line and the top, the top of the lip, but I'm going for a bit more male ears, a bit bigger ears. Um, everyone's ears are different, so that's something to take into account. But I'm just sort of going for the ideal. Okay, so once you sort of have that uh, ideal proportions, maybe make it a tad bit smaller. Move it up a bit. Okay, once you have that ideal proportions, go to the top view and rotate it around about there. And then position it like so. And then over here, when you're in front view, uh, rotate it in this kind of direction. So not straight, but in this kind of a direction. And from the side view, if you watched the previous tutorial, we found out that the ears doesn't go straight like this. It actually angles a little bit like that. Okay, so we just move it back. Uh, oh, and in the previous tutorial, we did find that the jawline area is, is a little bit too far back. So it needs to be right in the middle of the ear. So I'm just going to move it on the center line, like so. And in sculpt mode, we have to move this jawline. Okay, so let me actually go back. Yeah, that should be okay. Just for added effect, you can also go to add modifier subdivision surface and make it smoother. And then maybe you can drag out the shape to uh, further tweak the shape of the ears. So this is really up to you. You can add more loop cuts if you want to really fine grain control what your ears look like. So maybe I might go ahead and add in the ear lobes. Once you're generally happy with the shape, go ahead and apply the modifier. So eventually you don't want to have any modifier, you want it to be a standalone model. Okay, so with this selected, go ahead and uh, shift select this character and then join them together by hitting Ctrl J or selecting object join, which is the same thing as Ctrl J. So you have one uh, mesh. So now you have one mesh with the ears. Okay, so when you're joining, make sure that that part of the ear is intersecting with the mesh. Back in sculpting mode, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to remesh and then change this voxel size to maybe 0 0.02 uh, 
and then hit remesh. Okay, and straight away we get the ears connected to the character. But do keep in mind that it evenly distributes the vertices everywhere and you may lose detail or that sculpted detail that you did. But it doesn't matter, we are not at that polished stage yet. So it's actually okay if you lose detail. But in this case, I think I've lost a lot of detail. My lacrimal caruncle is gone. The sharpness in the edge of the eyes are gone. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J to undo that. And then change the remesh, the voxel size to be even smaller, maybe 0.01. Um, and maybe preserve volume. And then also go ahead and hit remesh. Cool. So now every, all the details are kept intact. And we also have the ears joined to our character as one singular mesh. So now all we need to do is go to the smooth brush. And um, yeah, just sculpt it away as normal. Just to try to blend these two together nicely. And actually, I think you can get better looking ears. Oh, I made one mistake. I forgot to move the jawline. So just quickly go there and move the jawline. But anyways, I'm just showing this as an example. This is not going to be the final mesh. So anyways, you get the idea. So you get this and then you pull these out. From the front so as you can see you have an easier time shaping the ears than you than you would using the whole snake hook tool that method and that i think uh, more advanced artists tend to prefer that other method but as a beginner you might find this workflow far more easier i'd also go ahead and inflate just the, the top parts over here make it a little bit more fatter over here and inflate this quite a bit as well you can decide whether you want earlobes or not. Um, so then you can sort of see that you have a nicer ear shape. And then you can start to draw in those details. So you, draw, you start to go and draw in that ear shape using the clay strips brush. Oops, sorry. Clay strips make it a little bit bigger. A uh, bit bigger than that. Uh, okay, and then once you've done that, Go ahead and uh, hit control and indent it inwards. So I'm not going to bother sculpting in the, the Y shape and all that other stuff again. It's pretty much like the same thing like we did in the previous tutorial. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. To take it a step further, and save even more time, what I would recommend is that you just download an ear model, like an already sculpted or modeled ear, and then just join that to the character and use the remesh tool to join it all together as one mesh. That really saves a lot of time because the ear has already been created once by someone else. You just join it onto the character so that your only job is really just tweaking the shape of the overall ear to the character that you're trying to create. So whether you're trying to create a large ear, skinny ear, uh, ear with a huge lobe or no lobe, or so on. So that's sort of taking a step further. This ear that I created here is actually from a previous course of mine. Uh, this was modeled poly by poly, which you can imagine would be quite a nightmare. So the advantage for me personally to create ears in a separate blend file is so that if I have to create multiple characters, I don't have to keep modeling the ears every single time. I just append this to the Blender file, and I just use it as is. It just saves me a lot of time on a feature of the face that I'm not really that highly interested in. All right, so that's the basics of creating ears the easier way by joining the object with the basic shape to the original mesh and then just simply remeshing it. And then when you do remesh it, uh, you have to obviously go and clean up the mesh in areas where there's too much detail. Otherwise, your viewport may be a little bit laggy. Alright, so I'll leave you to the next tutorial where you'll focus on creating the neck.